I'm Tracy Bankster with today's Record News Watch. Drivers heading down Route 211 in the town of Wallkill last evening certainly didn't give this pickup truck a second look. What they didn't know was that a state police officer was inside and he was communicating with fellow troopers in marked vehicles down the road, letting them know about approaching vehicles whose drivers were talking or texting on cell phones. And the pickup is uh, just one of a number of uh, undercover vehicles state police are using this summer in a campaign called SITE, Concealed Identity Traffic Enforcement, to crack down on distracted drivers. Changes in the law have increased the penalty for distracted driving from three to five points on a driver's license. Last year, there were more than 30,000 tickets written for texting while driving in New York State. And that's a 234% increase from the year before. Here are the results from last evening's State Police Route 211 enforcement detail. In a couple of hours, more than 100 tickets were issued to drivers, 35 for texting while driving. 20 for talking on a handheld cell phone, and the rest for an assortment of other vehicle and traffic violations, plus one marijuana possession arrest. The man convicted of causing the death of an Orange County woman back in 2009 was released from prison today. Self-help guru James Arthur Ray served 20 months in prison for negligent homicide following the deaths of three people during a sweat lodge spiritual cleansing ceremony in Arizona. One of the victims was 38-year-old Kirby Ann Brown, a former Westtown resident and 1989 graduate of Menacing Valley High School. Her parents, George and Virginia Brown, were holding a news conference in Manhattan today to urge those in the self-help industry to make a commitment to safe and ethical practices. Port Jervis police say an investigation determined that William Mendez had had sexual conduct with a child under the age of seven over a period of time. And now the 32-year-old Port Jervis man is facing charges of predatory sexual act against a child and sexual course of conduct against a child. Mendez was ordered held without bail pending arraignment in Port Jervis City Court. A Monticello teenager faces felony assault and weapons possession charges following a slashing incident in the village earlier this week. Monticello police say 17-year-old Daquan Butler approached a 16-year-old boy on Park Avenue shortly after midnight Monday. Words were exchanged and then police say Butler slashed the boy with an unknown sharp-edged object. The victim had to be treated for serious facial injuries at Catskill Regional Medical Center. Butler was ordered held on $250,000 bail. The 173rd edition of the Orange County Fair kicks off uh, this evening with its rides, food, games and attractions, including Friday fireworks, flying trapeze acts and an antique fire truck show. Fair runs through Sunday, July 28th and is closed Monday and Tuesdays. What the fair doesn't include is 4-H shows and exhibits. 4-H is holding uh, those activities at their education center and park, now located in a dairy farm field off Finchville Turnpike in Otisville. And they got a big welcome when their bus pulled into town of Hamptonburg Park late last night. Aboard were about 20 kids from Camp Sundown in upstate Columbia County. They have XP, Xeroderma pigmentosum, a very rare genetic disorder that has left them with an extreme sensitivity to ultraviolet rays from sunlight. Each summer, XP kids and their parents come from all over the world to enjoy a night camp experience with each other. And a big part of it is their visit to Campbell Hall, where local volunteers, including members of the local fire department, put on a fun night with all sorts of activities for the kids to enjoy. This is the 17th year Campbell Hall has hosted the Night of Fun. Organizers have no problem finding folks to help pitch in. We don't actually call anybody. They call us to come. They come here once. They want to try to help. And they come back year after year after year to donate their services and, and be part of this great night. At the end of the night, we go home and we're just so ecstatic and excited and just overjoyed to see these kids smiling and enjoying our night here in Campbell Hall. Shannon Balgerson and her daughter Mackenzie came all the way from British Columbia. Shannon says the interaction with other XP families makes them feel less isolated and makes the trip east well worth it. Camp Sundown means for a week my daughter gets to be a normal child, doesn't have to wear all her sun protection. And tonight is what my daughter looks forward to all year here at Campbell Hall because it's just 
just a great bunch of people and where would you find somebody that would do all this for your children? It's amazing for them to have a night where a whole town or a whole firehouse comes together to put together a, a party for them. They don't get to do this during the day. When there's an outside party, they don't get to participate. So to have them put on a show like this for these kids, it's absolutely amazing. And a highlight of last night's fun night, a big fireworks display at the park. Courtesy of Micah Lisson and the company Fireworks Extravaganza out of Rochelle Park, New Jersey. Providing something the kids could all enjoy under the safety of the stars. We'll be dealing with some uncomfortable weather conditions this weekend. Saturday will be mostly cloudy, hot and humid with temperatures reaching the middle 80s. Sunday will be partly sunny and humid with the highs in the upper 80s and there is the chance of a thunderstorm that could pop up either day in parts of our region. We'll stay connected to breaking news this weekend right here at Record Online and get caught up on all that is happening by reading the weekend editions of the Times Herald Record. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.